Somebody gave me some feedback about the channel and they said that I should have some more pictures of cute animals. And so I thought. This is the reptile information review and here's some footage of me riding a one wheel. So what in the world does that have to do with reptiles? Well, it's a personal electric vehicle and so we're gonna start there. We're gonna start with energy. This new class of vehicles, well, not really that new, probably, you know, 100 years ago or so, somebody came out with a personal vehicle, but now we have really great advancements in batteries as well as electric motors, which has lent itself to the creation of the personal electric vehicle. You might see one wheels, you might see things like the Segway shoes, the Segways themselves, maybe some of the electric unicycles, some of the small transport cars, or even an e-bike. All of these things are ways that you can move around without having to involve some of the other larger infrastructure that we've come accustomed to. That includes roads and trains and buses and everything else. So what does that have to do with reptiles? Well, the less of an impact that we can make on the environment, the more that we can invest in conservation into these animals. You don't often hear when animals first become extinct. In fact, you won't even notice until somebody that's doing a study or notices some collapse in some other animal. You will not know that there was, let's say, a type of turtle that disappeared. These animals are integral to the ecosystems that they're a part of. And without somebody monitoring reptiles, which are generally the last thing that somebody monitors, we have no idea how healthy that ecosystem is until it's too late and there's no more of a specific turtle or frog or what have you that caused the ecosystem to collapse. So we're going to jump over to Google, you know, that thing where people type what they want to be true. But first we're going to check out this little banner down here. And you can read all about Google's commitment to the environment. If you were like me, then you probably grew up being told that the earth was going to catch fire because you left the sink on while you were brushing your teeth. Yeah, that responsibility has to go to companies. But if you want a fun way to get around, that may reduce your burden and carbon footprint and all that other good stuff on a personal level, maybe you'll look into one of these personal electric vehicles. There's plenty to choose from, and as I mentioned, it's only been about 100 years that these things have been around. Obviously not these nice electric unicycles that these people have. But to jump back on topic, so you're probably not going to be putting your ball python on a one wheel anytime soon. However, the thing that you should be worried about, well, maybe not worried, but a little concerned with, is the fact that we use a lot of products that are being pretty much lined up to be removed from being sold. It's going to become very difficult to find things like incandescent lamps. That is, you know, your average halogen, uh, anything that has a little filament inside that lights up. Uh, the halide lamps are really popular overseas, but mostly here in the U.S. We have things like halogen, uh, the mercury vapor bulbs, as well as floodlights, etc., etc., etc. The incandescent bulb has been on the chopping block for a very long time now. You will probably not be able to find some of the older halogen lamp lamps that you may have grown up with at the hardware store today because they simply are not energy efficient. As a fun history fact, this has been going on since probably about World War II. Fluorescent lamps became the de facto standard to be installed in schools and public places because they were able to deliver a clean and bright light that the incandescent lamps struggled to provide without doing things like causing you know energy usage to go up because they had to cool the building down because the lamps were so hot. The lamps didn't have to be replaced nearly as much, and ultimately, I'm sure that anybody listening to this was raised in a generation where almost anywhere you go is powered by fluorescent lamps. Now, some of you out there that are counting up the years a little bit might remember when people would complain about fluorescent lamps, say that they cause headaches, they cause eye strain, they caused early onset aging, uh, the UV light escaped from the lamp, and irradiated all the children and it really wasn't something that was true it was a lot of fear uncertainty and doubt about new technologies and the technology behind fluorescence has only gotten better some of you may remember when you flipped the switch and you got that nice horror movie effect where the light blinked on and off and made crazy buzzing noises you don't really see that at, at all anymore the fluorescent lamps have had different changes made so that their starters for example are completely electronic 
they don't have these big oil feel filled inductors and uh, yeah so fluorescents are nice even the compact fluorescents the ones that are the little coil bulbs that everybody hates turned out to be not that bad some of the early generations sure people were able to detect sorts of UV light leakage around the bends of the compact fluorescent bulb but overall they were a safe and decent light bulb that just didn't catch on in popularity and unfortunately have had their lifespan cut short by the LED now one of the best things about the LED is that it's a small compact little tiny thing when you get a bulb that goes into a traditional lamp you're actually getting probably dozens of LEDs that are all wired together there's no mercury which of course is uh, included in pretty much every fluorescent lamp there's no UV leakage in a standard diode and each diode actually has a very specific wavelength that it can emit light LEDs are easy to manufacture and have a low energy consumption profile as well as a low waste profile so to get back to reptiles LEDs are not only the future that you're looking forward to in your own household where you probably are already using LED lamps but this is also the future that we're looking forward to with reptiles when will we be able to use LEDs that are able to consume a very small amount of power they have a very low waste footprint and are able to deliver exactly what our animals need without all of the side effects and, and problems of fluorescent lamps, including higher energy consumption, the requirement of things like ballasts, again, mercury being inside of the tube. Yeah, they don't contain that much mercury, but mercury at all is kind of a scary thing. Uh, fun fact is, if you've been around fluorescent lamps at any point in your life, you've probably heard things like, don't breathe in a room where a fluorescent lamp is broken or don't let pregnant women handle fluorescent lamps because they're in mercury. Yeah, those might be a little blown out of proportion, but it still is a fact that we are throwing mercury into the ground where we want reptiles to thrive, which makes no sense. So now that we've taken a little bit of a round trip through light bulbs and electric vehicles and everything else, let's jump forward to the future and see what's going to replace fluorescent lamps like one wheels and Tesla's will eventually replace cars. This is the Sursun product by Vivtech, which is something that I'm excited about. You can see it comes in an E27 uh, regular lamp adapter. It's got a nice piece of glass on the front, screws right into any regular old lamp. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew my LED bulb here because who has incandescent lamps anymore, right? And uh, go ahead and screw this thing in. Don't, don't do this, this is actually terrible because you don't really want uh, UV light just shooting out into the yeah this is this is awful and it's awful to look at but uh, that's the product that um, VivTech has and it's really nice it's really compact you can already see uh, that it is a very small form factor and if I need to throw this away it's not gonna take up too much space but uh, let's uh, let's make it dangerous right I mean uh, that's the complaint right is that these things are dangerous so let's try and make it dangerous so the first thing we're gonna do is pull it apart it comes with this little piece of glass here uh, I'm not sure if that's just for splash or if that's supposed to stop any uh, leakage um, what is this nice little reflector uh, yeah we'll put that down um, that, that's something else that I always get confused with is people that don't have reflectors on their lamps it's really weird so uh, I'm going to let the camera just decide to focus on whatever it wants while we go ahead and unscrew this. Uh, that's one thing I can say about these is that, uh, yeah, actually it took me, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes to figure out how to get this thing apart. But uh, I triumphed over this lamp. Take that, Ryan McVeigh. I have triumphed over your, over your lamp. This screw doesn't want to, what? what's going on here? Let me try this again. Round two. Uh, maybe maybe I'll get this uh, uh, you know what maybe I don't want to take this apart you know oh, never mind I got it I got it I got it so shake that screw out um, yeah three screws who would have thought why does this thing need three screws in it um, and, and that piece that screws on the front is actually pretty heavy-duty too uh, I wonder if this voids my warranty I have to ask about that so anyway we've got all that pulled apart and uh, so uh, so now what um, there's three LEDs here that are UV specifically LEDs and then two that are white light and underneath all of that there is a tiny transformer that changes 120 volts over to the voltage requirement for the LEDs. 
So that's really all there is to it. Uh, really, these LEDs don't even need the voltage that comes out of the lamp socket. Uh, they just decided to do that as a way to be convenient so that you could replace your existing bulbs with these. But uh, as I mentioned, you know, the complaint is that these are dangerous. So um, let's see, I, I couldn't cut myself when I took this apart. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's do this. Do not do this. Oh, you fill around with a little bit, but uh, never, never, ever, never, ever should you do this. But like I said, uh, these bulbs are supposed to be dangerous, so I want to make sure to make it as dangerous as possible. So we're going to go ahead and screw that together, and uh, yeah, we've got some lines with some live voltage, and you know what, let's turn this thing on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, still works, so I didn't mess it up too bad. But as illustrated... Uh, the lamp provides that 120 volts, goes through a little tiny transformer, goes as a little rectifier built in there. You know what? Since we're still trying to make these bulbs dangerous, let's poke it with metal sticks. So I've got my metal sticks here. Yeah, let's get some live power going. Yep, I make sure that uh, my feet are touching the ground and that full current would go through my body as I jab this with a metal. Oh, 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 hey, hey, look out. I don't want, hey, oh. That's a lot of UV. I don't know. I don't have glasses on right now. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt myself while I'm stabbing this thing with metal sticks. Um, so, oh yeah, that's uh, that's kind of hard to read the voltmeter that way. You know what? I didn't really plan this out, but it is kind of dangerous. So, uh, so I think I fulfilled the requirement that people have to make these bulbs dangerous. Um, we're going to do some little prodding around here. There is a little tiny transformer in here. There's a little rectifier circuit in here. Um, probably would have been a little bit better if maybe I got a digital oscilloscope. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is good enough. And this is really, it's really, really bright. If you take a voltmeter, um, at, you know, you know what? I'm just going to, can I, can I just put this box over? Is this, does this still work this way? Is this, uh, yeah, that's, that's good, right? That's, that should be all right. Probably. Let's go back to poking it with metal sticks. Nope. Let's drop a metal stick. Uh, oh, what do we got? So, yeah, there's, there's not... Um, well, that's not even good contact. You know, it's, it's... Oh, there we are. So that little transformer is, is working exactly as expected. Um, so these lamps are supposed to take three watts. And if you have something, oh no, like sunglasses, please let me borrow them at some point. But uh, if you have something like a Google Home or an Alexa or any of the smart plugs, a lot of the smart plugs will actually tell you the amount of um, watts that your items are using. You know, they might have a report with like a kilowatt hour or something like that. And uh, I would invite people to try that with these. Um, so, uh, so the actual LEDs, according to this, there's 25 volts going across that. No, that that's not dangerous. That, that's not da and it's DC. That's not dangerous at all. Definitely should poke the other. Yeah, let's, poke, let's go back to poking the dangerous side. So, um, yeah, so we pulled this thing apart. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they're waterproof, but they definitely seem water resistant. They uh, do get a little bit warm. Um, I'm sure that the transformer uh, aids in that. The actual LEDs themselves do heat up a little bit, but definitely not that much. And it's probably comparable to the ballast inside of a fluorescent lamp. The end of the bulb does get a little warmer than a fluorescent probably would get, um, but hopefully you've got lamp guards or screens or, or something along those lines that you're using to protect your animals from those lamps. These do have a really nice little profile where you would be able to drill a hole into the top of a standard PVC or something like that and just push the front of the lamp through. I'm not sure if Ryan will approve of, of a little bit of reverse engineering here, but this would be easy enough that you would, whoop, sparks. See, I told you we were gonna make it dangerous. We definitely made it dangerous. Ryan McVeigh, your lamps are dangerous. Dang dangerous. Danger. Let's turn that off. Okay, 